Hello, my name is Yarinette Rivera, and today I will be solving a problem for my Discrete Structures Mathematics course. The problem I will be solving will have me prove one of De Morgan's laws, that the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P or the negation of Q. I will be proving this using truth tables and by deductively using the definition of logical equivalence. To start, let's construct our truth tables. So this is how we would set up our truth tables. We have the values of P and Q in all possible combinations. So true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. And we make one truth table for each side of the statement. So we have negation of P and Q. This is our state this is our truth table for this side of the statement negation of p and q. We need to find the truth values and see if those are going to be logically equivalent to the truth values of this part of the statement negation of p or the negation of p or negation of q which is this truth table. So if we have the same outcomes here and the same outcomes here then we'll know that this is a valid statement. So to start we have P and Q, we need to find what's in the parentheses first. So we find first P and Q, because then this value is what's going to be negated. So with the laws of conjunction, we know that it is only true when both P and Q are true. So if P is true and Q is true, then this is when the only moment when this statement is true. The rest, we'll know that these are false. Now, the negation of these values would be the opposite of this. So the negation of P and Q when P and Q is true is false. And the negation of P and Q when P and Q is false is true. And that's the same all the way down this table. Now, these are our values for the negation of P and Q. Now we're going to solve for the negation of P or negation of Q. So we already have the same values of P and Q at the beginning of our table, and we need to find first the negation of P and the negation of Q before we can put them together. So the negation of P will be the opposite of these truth values. So opposite of true would be false. False, opposite of false is true and true. Same for Q. Opposite of true is false. Opposite of false is true negation of true is false and the negation of false is true. So now we have the negation of P and the negation of Q. So now we can find this statement, the negation of P or negation of Q. We know that by laws of conjunction, this statement is only false when both terms are false. So if the negation of P is false and the negation of Q is false, then we know this is false. In all other cases, it's true. So with false and true, we'll have true. True and false will be true. And negation of P, true. Or negation of Q, true, will give us true. So now we have the same values for each side. The negation of P and Q is false when P is true and Q is true. So is this one, it's false when P is true and Q is true and so on and so forth. So we see that by, since the truth tables gave us the same truth values in the same locations for the same values of P and Q, then we know that by using these truth tables, the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P or the negation of Q. Now, what we need to do next is prove it using the definition of logical equivalence. So we take this out and by deductively using the definition of logical equivalence we will be solving it these four different ways. We need to solve these conditional statements to make sure that this argument is valid. So we have if the left hand side, this is my shorthand for left hand side, LHS, if the left hand side is true then the right-hand side is true. And this is my shorthand for right-hand side, RHS. So if the left-hand side is true, then the right-hand side is true. Also, if the right-hand side is true, then the left-hand side is true. Also, 
If the left-hand side is false, then the right-hand side is false. And lastly, if the right-hand side is false, then the left-hand side is false. So there are four different ways we could be solving this. We're going to start with the first one. If the left-hand side is true, then the right-hand side is true. Therefore, we need to assume that the left-hand side is true. So we'll put this here. If the left-hand side of this statement, which would be negation of P and Q, is true, then we need to see if the negation of P or negation of Q is also true. So we'll have here our assertions on this side and their justifications on this side. So to start, our assumption that the negation of P and Q is true. Next, we know that if we have something negated, then this value will give us the opposite. So if the negation of this is true, then P and Q should be false. And that's by definition of negation, which we did to step one. So now we have P and Q is false. Therefore, we know that either by definition of conjunction, that either P could be false, Q could be false, or they could both be false. So let's assume without loss of generality, which is what I wrote here, assume without loss of generality that P is going to be our value that carries the false. And that's our assumption. So now if our P is false, then up here we have negation of P or negation of Q, then our negation of P would be true, which is definition of negation, which we just did to our step three. So if we have negation of P, is true, then we know by definition of disjunction that the statement is always true if there is at least one of them that carries a value of true. So we'll know that the negation of P or negation of Q is true by definition of disjunction. Since negation of P is true, then it doesn't matter what the value of negation Q has because it'll still give us a true thanks to the disjunction. And this could have occurred also with Q. If Q was false, then the negation of Q would have been true. And either way, if Q would have been, if the negation of Q was true, then it wouldn't matter what value the negation of P had. So now we know this statement is valid. If the left-hand side is true, then the right-hand side is true. So that's what we can write here. We have, if the left-hand side is true, then the right-hand side is true. Check. Now let's work with number three. If the left-hand side is false, then the right-hand side should be false. Let's see if we can prove that. We have it here. All right, perfect. If the left-hand side of the statement, which would be the negation of P and Q is false, then According to the proof, we'll write our assertions here and our justifications for those assertions here. So our assertion is that it's false, right? The left-hand side, the negation of P and Q is false. That's our assumption. So we know, as we saw before, that the negation of something gives us the opposite value. So if the negation of P and Q is false, then P and Q should be true by definition of negation, which we did in step one. So now, if we have P and Q is true, we know that by definition of conjunction, the only way this statement is true is if both P and Q carry the same truth value of true. So we know that P is true and Q is true by definition of conjunction, which we did in step two. So now, knowing this, we need to get to the negation of P and the negation of Q. So if P is true and Q is true, then the negation of P will be false and the negation of Q would be false. And that's by definition of negation that we did in step three. So now we can put these together and see what value we will get if we plug in a disjunction. So the negation of P is false and the negation of Q is false. So the negation of P or the negation of Q will be false. Because by definition of disjunction, which we saw in step four, this statement would only be false if both values were false. And we see that negation of P is false and negation of Q is false. Therefore, this is false. So we see that if the left-hand side is false, then the right-hand side is false. Therefore, this statement is also valid and we can check this one off. So we'll get this out of the way. 
So now we have one is valid and we have that three is valid, right? If the left-hand side is false and the right-hand side is false. Now, we can continue to do these same similar proofs for number two and number four. However, it is interesting to notice that we can use simply the law of contraposition to find both two and four. So we know that contraposition means that P implies Q is logically equivalent to the negation of Q implies the negation of P. So using this, we see that with number one, if the left-hand side is true, then the right-hand side is true. Its contraposition will be number four. If the right-hand side is false, then the left-hand side is false. So this is also a valid argument. And if we have number three, where if the left-hand side is false, then the right-hand side is false, its contraposition will be if the right-hand side is true, then the left-hand side is true. Therefore, this is also a valid argument. And there we conclude proving De Morgan's Law using both the definition of logical equivalence and truth tables. Thank you for watching.